Um, I've been dealing with something for the past couple of days. Um, I've, I've heard you speak on in, in dealing with others' experiences, not to try to control it, um, just worry about feeling good myself. And in my work environment, it's been a challenge recently. Uh, I work with an individual who I suspect probably has somewhat of a substance abuse issue. And in watching their conduct with my fellow coworkers, it just pisses me off. He, and it's, I kind of want to step in, but he's not doing it to me because the experience hasn't, I haven't brought the experience to me. Yeah. And I want to, <laughs> right. <laughs> right. <laughs> because then I start, in wanting to control their experience, I started asking for it to come to me so now I can control it. And um, what say you? <laughs> well, let's talk about interpersonal relationships because there are a lot of them going on. In fact, it's what makes up your life experience, isn't it, for the most part? Yes. So does it matter to you that there are those who have differing opinions about how to interact in a conceptual world shouldn't everybody be able to pretty much do what they want to do yeah, for the most part as long as it doesn't hurt someone else and do you think that you or anyone has the ability to control the behavior can you control the behavior of the victimizer Can you control the behavior of the victim? In other words, do you have the power to intervene on either end of that co-creative experience and affect it? Yes and no. Um, say, for instance, in an interpersonal interaction, in an argument, um, I could step in and intervene and stop it at that moment. So you could stop it at the manifested level. In other words, this is what yes. we were talking about earlier. You could put yourself between them mm -hmm. and you could take the brunt of the abuse. Oh no, I wouldn't take the abuse. <laughs> you could prevent the abuse. You could dish some of it out. You could <laughs> intervene and through action, you could stop a certain amount of momentum or you could intervene. Yes. We're going to tell you a story that's going to seem a little off the subject. Okay. In order to lay a basis for the trap that we're laying for you. All right. <laughs> All right. <laughs> One day, Jerry and Esther were on the front porch, and they had erected a bird bath, only to discover that it attracted birds right to where the cat was. So they were in the process of realizing that they really did not want to be involved in giving the cat easier access to the birds and so they were in the process of deciding what they were going to do about it and party cat who lived at their house he was really the neighbor's cat <laughs> came just for the parties leaped <laughs> into the air he was standing at esther's feet a bird flew in party cat leaped over the banister and snagged the bird out of the air and Esther leaped over the banister <laughs> and snagged the bird out of Party Cat's mouth. Ooh. Jerry couldn't believe it. <laughs> <laughs> he knew the cat could fly, he just didn't know Esther could. <laughs> so Esther saved the bird. And the bird was most appreciative. <laughs> Truly. I sat on the fence sang a song to them, offered appreciation, and an hour later, Party Cat <coughs> caught the bird oh. and ate it. Esther said, bad cat. And Party Cat said, really good bird. <laughs> Party Cat wasn't having any of it. So the reason that it seems a little off the subject, obviously it seems off the subject, but Esther was inter- fearing or intervening or getting between others who had an agreement. 
Now, it's an agreement that's been in motion for a long time. And while we don't want to put victimizers and victims in the same category of that kind of agreement because they didn't come forth from non-physical with the agreement to do that. But still, there is a momentum and an agreement underway. And when you decide that you're going to intervene or interfere, you don't make much happen other than you get yourself involved and prevent a little bit here and there and here and there. But you're much better to do your helping or your creating on a vibrational level before the momentum. You see what we're getting at? Because when someone is abusing someone and it angers you, you've joined that momentum. You haven't joined the momentum that you intend to join. You want to join the momentum of upliftment and of, of help and of love and of unconditional love, you see. Yeah. And so we know that if you were to find someone on the street bleeding, you and most everybody would do everything you could to help them. But when you see someone abusing someone else, you don't feel like helping them. You feel like abusing them more. You feel like at least preventing them from offering their abuse to others. And the abuse that they're offering is just an explanation of their greater pain. And so that's what we mean when we say you want to get out ahead of it. You want it to be an energy thing that you're working on and not a knee-jerk reaction. And we think a really good conversation has come out of this gathering today. It's new. We have not had this conversation before and it's a breakthrough conversation about not waiting for the manifestational moment in order to apply your attention don't try to stop momentum once the manifestation is underway because by the time something manifests there is enough momentum that is already going that at best you're going to join it and at worst, it's going to knock you down. You are not going to change manifestation once it is in the mode of manifesting. Oh, that's huge. That's huge. So that means you can study the history of things that have happened, or you can remember instances, or you can even observe something. And of course, you got to do whatever you want to do. We're encouraging you to stop the bleeding too. In other words, you don't want to leave somebody lying in the street bleeding to death. And we think that it is helpful to stop in whatever way you can, but it isn't enough. And that's the reason that it frustrates you so much. And what happens to most of the world is you are only responding once you see a manifestation that motivates you to an impulse to respond. And instead, you want to get down deep into the emotion of who you are and into the clarity of who you are and set forth those intentions. So what deliberate creating really is about is getting your own momentum going because there is no exclusion anywhere in this universe that is based upon law of attraction. You can't stop things from happening. You can only start things happening. And when you start energy that's in opposition to what you want, all you do is clog up your own pipes and slow yourself down, you see. But when you witness things that you don't like, like physical or verbal abuse, you want to stop and say, what am I really looking at here? Because we promise you, no one ever abuses another who is not feeling abused himself ever, 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 ever. Mm -hmm. That momentum is already underway. Mm -hmm. And so you want to ask yourself, do I join that momentum or do I start another momentum? And is the time to try to start another momentum right there in the middle of all of that? Is it? No, no, that's not the time to start it or to try to stop the momentum that's already going on. In fact, we would go so far as to say, you are as humanitarians, you are better off to do your best to stop the momentum if it has come to blows already than you are to try to start another momentum because you can't stop those bullets from spraying in that moment. You got to step back far enough from it that you can get hold of who you are and then get another long-term, long-range momentum going. The analogies you're using are perfect because uh, I happen to be a firefighter. <laughs> Do you think that uh, we're in a place of discovery here, so we want to flesh it out just a little bit. Mm -hmm. Do you think that you have the ability to single-handedly get enough momentum going to affect a mass consciousness or culture. Absolutely. Do you think that you can get that momentum going when you are currently or have recently witnessed the injustice that makes you feel uncomfortable? 
conceptually I know I can. I'm still struggling on. Well, conceptually you can't. When you are witnessing what you consider to be something that you would like to stop, you cannot get the energy going about what you would like to go instead. And that's why we want to rest for just a moment in this understanding that this is a universe that is based upon attraction and that there is no exclusion. And you cannot stop something from happening because in your effort to stop it, you add to the momentum of keeping it going. So do you think that it is easier to start momentum in the direction of something that you would want from a neutral or we're going to use the word slow movement because energy is always in movement. It's never stalled out. If a car is rolling down the hill and it's going to hit something, would it be easier for you to stop it and make it go that way once it's already in motion that way? Or would it have been easier for you to move it in the direction that you wanted before it began moving in the direction that you didn't want? Do you follow? Right. Move it in the direction that I want before rather than so, try to change. So let's say there is a car. It was just sitting there and the brake wasn't on and gravity is tugging on it. And so it's beginning to move and it's just barely beginning to move. Do you think that you have the ability to put yourself in front of that car and stop it? Mm, if it's depends just on how moving. big it is. Oh, just barely, barely moving? Yeah. Just barely moving. It's just barely starting to move. Yes. What if it's been moving for a while? What if you're at the bottom of the hill? <laughs> it was at the top of the hill and it's on its way down. You don't want to put yourself between it and its momentum because you understand the momentum. So what we're saying to you is when things are manifesting, you're at the bottom of the hill. Once they're manifesting, there's enough energy in motion that it really is better to just let it run its course and from it you take the bounce and then from a neutral place when there's no car rushing down the hill at you when there's nothing that is making you scamper out of the way or run into the path of it that's when you get out ahead of it with your ideas of what you are wanting so that you are the perpetrators of momentum that's leading toward what you want rather than those who are trying to impossibly stop momentum that's moving in the other direction. Well, what if you put that ability into your vortex? Well, you already have. That's a wonderful thing that you are acknowledging because that momentum is already in your vortex. There is already that incredible momentum toward well-being that's in the, your vortex. But humans squander that while they're trying to stop the momentum of what they don't want instead of going with the momentum of what you want. So many are trying to stop the momentum of what they don't want. You following? This is good stuff. Yes. Momentum is a really good word because you understand momentum. You understand mm -hmm. inertia. You understand path of least resistance. Mm -hmm. And you're coming to understand the laws of the universe. And so everything that we are offering you is to help you to get in sync with these powerful laws. To get in sync with the laws of well-being rather than trying to prevent. There is no exclusion, you see. There's no source of darkness. You can put a resistor on a light switch and you can suppress the light, but there is no source of darkness. You don't walk into a room and look for a dark switch. You're not going to flip a switch and cause darkness to cover up the light. You can resist the light. And so the true momentum is a momentum of well being. And there are a lot of people that have practiced not allowing it. And so they are attracting to themselves the manifestational evidence of it, you see. Yeah. But the best way to help them no longer attract the manifestational evidence of it is to withdraw your attention from it as best you can. But then you say, but that's not enough. I don't want to put my head in the sand. I want to do something that's proactive. I want to do something that's beneficial. So you know what we would do if we were standing in your physical shoes? We would make a list of the people who are working with you. And we would start with the easy ones. And we would make lists of positive aspects, doing the easy ones first. And we would eventually, within a day or two or three, work ourselves up to the place of making lists of positive aspects about those that have been giving you grief.